Hey everyone, today's project is going to be trying to automate my Wayne Dalton iDrive garage door opener to be able to work with smart home systems and to be able to operate it with my phone. Uh, this is a somewhat obscure, at this point now much older garage door opener that was very neat at the time. And the reason why is because it has a torsion bar style mount that doesn't need an overhead unit to pull the garage door up. So if you have high ceilings or limited space, you could use one of these and not have any obstructions uh, in the garage door, in the garage where the door opener would normally be. However, unfortunately, these are known to be very terrible and they break frequently. I think it's unusual that there are any around that still work, and it's unusual that I think anybody will try to fix them. Uh, once they break, they get replaced with a more traditional unit, which is unfortunate because it is a pretty neat space-saving design that, when it works, works pretty well. However, one of the big downsides, at least for me, is the door can only be operated by this remote and I only have one remote. That means that when I'm in the house trying to open the garage door, I need to push this remote, uh, which can be mounted on the wall next to the door where a traditional garage door opener button might live. But also if I wanted to open it from my car, I would also still need this remote. So I have to take this remote and bring it into my car from the house if I plan on using the garage. And because I only have one, I either have to go into my car every time or remember to grab this off the wall every time I leave, uh, which is not very convenient. And this remote takes two AAA batteries, and it, I don't use the garage door that much, but it seems to kill the batteries very quickly. So I don't know if there's something wrong with this remote in particular. Typically, if I leave the batteries inserted, by the time I get back to it and want to open the garage door again, the batteries are dead. Before I started down this path, I did try the MyQ garage door opener. It's a affordable piece of hardware that also includes an app that allows you to basically mimic the signal from the remote in order to operate your garage door through their interface. Unfortunately, the setup was really easy and it seems like it would work really well on other doors, but for this door and this opener, I couldn't ever get it configured properly so that it would remember the configuration. Going through the configuration process, I could get the door to operate, but as soon as I tried to save it, it was no longer it was no longer connected. So I think that just goes along with this finicky iDrive system. So unfortunately, it didn't work, but it is still good for letting me know if the door is either open or closed. And I will link this in the description because I do think it is a nice smart home automation kit. Finally, there is a plug or a set of pins on the side of the unit for putting optical sensors in to prevent the door from closing on something. And it also looks like there are pins for to operate a garage door light. But unfortunately, there's no way to easily set up a hardwired doorbell type switch because that would solve a lot of these issues that I'm having or running into or inconveniences I should say. So that's where this project is going. First I had to gather some materials for this project. This is just a length of two wires uh, that are stuck together red and blue. The colors don't necessarily matter for this. I also got this a uh, little controller. It's a Wi-Fi smart inching relay. And the inching relay, what that means is that when you initiate the command for this to do something, it's going to connect the relay or connect the switch for some short amount of time, probably a half a second or a second, and then it's going to open it back up. So what, that's, what this is going to do is simulate pushing uh, a button. For the remote, this button here is the one that actually activates opening and closing the door, and it's the same button to either open it or close it. So that's, I already took the remote apart, that's this middle button here. So I'm going to use this wire 
to solder on each side of that button. I'm going to connect that up to this uh, inching relay and then this will be able to connect to my phone and other home automation and then I'll be able to effectively push this button from my phone whenever I want. A couple other things I needed were a 12 volt power supply. Uh, I'm going to need this to power this uh, Wi-Fi inching relay. I don't have another five millimeter connector so I'm just going to cut the end off of this off this power supply and put the wires in directly uh, into these plugs and then also to solve the problem of the batteries always dying I found this set it's basically two fake AAA batteries that when you put it in place you can plug it into the wall and it provides constant power as long as the house has power so this seems like a, a good cheap solution to get around the battery dying problem. So I'm going to need to solder this wire onto this switch and then I'll be able to um, start making the rest of the connections and hopefully get all of this put together. Okay, with the switch wired up, I need to reassemble the controller. That should be good enough. Primarily I'm doing this so I have a place for the batteries to sit, otherwise it will be hard to, to keep them in place. And now, well, it might be hard to keep them in place anyway. So that should work. And the only thing left now is to wire up this little inching relay controller. There are a couple of indicators on the bottom to identify what these different pins are. There is an NO, which stands for normally open, a common, a normally closed, and then this is the ground and 12 volt input for the power. So the, the power supply that I cut the end off of go into these two, and then the wire that I added to the switch, I'm going to put in the common and the normally open. The difference between normally open and normally closed is the unactivated state of the switch. So if it's normally closed, then when you're not pushing the button, the wire, the switch will be in the on position or the wires will be connected, the circuit will be connected. If it's normally open, then it will be disconnected or the switch will normally be in the off position until you trigger it and then it will connect. You can actually utilize in some projects both of these to have a an off state and an on state uh, with two different things but for this case I'm just going to need to use the normally open and the common pins. Also when I cut the end off of this power supply I left enough extra wire so maybe I can utilize this plug in another project but that way it just if I went all the way to the end then this would be trash. So to wire it up I just have to put the power and the ground in and then the normally open and the common will be for the switch And that should be it. With the power supply wired to the controller and the fake batteries wired to this other power supply, the only thing that is left to be done should be to plug them in, 
connect it to the app that uh, is associated with this Wi-Fi controller and then I should be able to test it. I might put a bit of hot glue or some other tape or something to help hold these batteries in but that's not critical for right now and I'm probably just going to stick these on the wall in the garage somewhere close enough to an outlet so I can plug both of these in and then I shouldn't ever have to touch this remote again and I should be able to be able to open the garage door from either inside my car or outside my house or wherever I need to which will be really nice if nothing else just so I don't have to worry about carrying around that remote. Let's get it all plugged in and we'll give it a try. At this point I have the batteries, the AAA batteries for the remote plugged into the wall so the remote is active. I also have the power supply for the inching relay connected into the wall so the relay is active. There's a light on it that uh, you can see on the back and now that everything is connected after a few minutes of setup on the app I was able to get this set up and configured there is a settings page that allows you to configure the inching uh, parameters I set it for um, one second so that means when this is activated it's going to connect the press the button effectively for one second and then unpress it and it seems to work very nicely. So that was just a demo of the garage door opening and I stopped it halfway and then I closed it again. This is going to be exceptionally helpful and just convenient to have. That pretty much wraps it up for this project. I need to, maybe I'll 3D print a case for this and make this a little bit nicer, but for now this is great. All of this stuff I will link in, in the description. And that's it for this project. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Comment below with any suggestions. And uh, I'll see you next time.